Hello my dear Art Ma Army how are you guys it's been forever since i made a video sorry about the break but here i am back again i have been working on nft artworks in the last 6 to 8 months and i have been creating a lot of pepe artworks i absolutely love doing that and i want to give you the same joy so go ahead watch this video where i teach you how to draw pepe from start to finish step by step without any edits you can follow the entire process and pause and rewind watch it back again at your own pace i hope you guys enjoy and learn something in this video i will meet you towards the end again so let us begin i have this document that i have opened right in front of me this right here is the background color which is absolutely white right now i am going to go ahead on a new layer start making a sketch i'm using procreate pencil which is a basic pencil uh, that you can use with any other drawing application that you are using you can use a pencil to start sketching all right uh, so this is the pencil that i have picked let me go ahead start making a simple shape like this now i always talk about how your hand needs to be loose right and your hand needs to be loose and flowy not like this you don't want to make the lines like this because then you will be restricting the motion of your hand all right so it has to be fluid it has to be free flowing and let there be very messy lines that's completely fine all right what's the next thing that we are going to do we are going to add two simple again oval shapes at the top of the head right this is basically the base of the face of pepe and uh, this right here is the uh, you know bulge for the eyes all right there are two bulges for the eyes now we have to go ahead add the different forms that make the entire face now we started with the big shapes we are going ahead and adding the other shapes that we think we need so what are we doing here i am just going ahead and adding like a very rough um shape for the mouth okay so you are seeing that everything is quite messy yeah nothing is clean i am not aiming to be clean here all i'm trying to do is get the placement of things right yeah <clears throat> what is the other thing i'm going to go ahead and start adding the eyeballs now eyeballs are two again spherical oval shaped things that come somewhere there all right so we are now starting to see that the face is starting to emerge why am i going with these different uh, shapes first rather than going ahead and doing the line itself because we want to understand what is the form that is underlying this object that we are drawing when you do that you will be in a much better place the way you will place things the way you can you know reorganize stuff is going to be much more easy for you to uh, follow rather than if you have uh, if you start by drawing just the line so what i'm doing now is i have made this rough sketch i know it doesn't look very clean but that's okay that's the right way to do it learn things the right way and you will be much faster you will be able to make progress very very uh, quickly all right so what i'm doing now is i'm zooming in to go into certain smaller details now uh, i can go ahead and make a mark something like this which is going to mark the edge of the eye similarly on the other side again i'm going to go and mark the edge of the eye right um i'm going to go ahead add the upper lid of the eye again again the same thing i'm following um on both eyes right so there is the eyelids on top of that this ball or this spherical shape that we have added i'm going to make that slightly more prominent similarly here as well i'm going to make another mark this is going to bring out the shape of the eyeball and on top of that we have these um you know lines which are going to be the top of the bulges on top of the eyes right this is the shape of the face that pepe has it is a very characteristic very uh, distinct looking face so to say yeah um i'm also going to go ahead and darken the lines that i think will become my final lines there is a lot of lines here so i'm not fixating on one line but i'm just going ahead and trying to find that spot where i think the line should ultimately be so going ahead and doing that now yeah i hope you are able to now see the face coming uh together 
let me go ahead and add the lower part of the eye as well so the eye has this shape and then there is another line at the bottom which happens to be the um, fold of the eyelid on the bottom side now this side also i will do the same thing yeah i'm doing the exact same thing on both sides uh, the face is pointing this direction there is tongue somewhere inside here right i'm just going to add a little bit of a shape something like that a rough shape right here as well the other thing which will kind of bring it to almost completion is the um, eyeballs you can use the you know ability of procreate to give you proper shapes by holding on to the shape that you have made and tapping with one finger so if i tap with this finger it becomes completely circular let me go ahead and show you that on the other side as well i made this shape it's not completely circular now i can hold it and it will become absolute circle yeah um, try and keep them both of same size if they are not then you can see the other way to do it is copy the one eye that you have made on one side to take it to the other side that's another way to do it so that you get like absolutely same sizes if you can you know get an approximation that's always fine yeah i think now we are getting our um, pepe artwork almost close to how it should look so this is going to be a very simple straightforward uh, technique to create pepe on procreate or any digital drawing application that you can use um, if you are somebody who does not have the ipad and does not have the apple pencil then you can always do this on your mobile phone um, it's very simple you can use something like a um, you know ibis paint x application with a simple stylus pen and you can create this as well so don't let the lack of tools be the reason for you to not create i would want you to go ahead and experiment and you know create as much art as you can because it's fun right it's fun to be able to do stuff and create something out of your own imagination now what we are doing now is i'm going ahead and refining it now do not hesitate from take you know rotating things around taking different angles and maybe making changes whichever way you would want I, you see i've been rotating the entire thing all over the place and then i'm making changes as i need now the next step that i'm going to do after here is going to be go to layers create a new layer on top and on this layer i'm going to be doing the lining work but before that you have to reduce the opacity uh, of this layer because of which the lines will become lighter so that it is easier for you to go ahead and make the lines on top of it so i'm making another layer on top and using the you know inking brush um, you can use whichever different kind of inking brushes there are i prefer using studio pen i like this because it gives you with the pressure that you apply it gives you thinner and thicker kind of lines yeah so i'm going to go ahead and do that now this is the new layer on top and i'm going to turn it to my preference right turn the document to the preference or the angle that you would want to draw in usually you know dragging the line towards you it's a little easier than doing the line away from you i feel that i have experienced it but it is very subjective you are a left hander right hander depending on what um you know is your dominant hand depending on that you can get different kinds of um you know lines and the output that you get will be slightly different in comparison yeah um so i'm going ahead and starting to do these lines i'm going zoomed in if you are seeing now i'm going to go ahead and zoom in and start making these lines in a fashion that uh, can look clean and crisp making changes if you want to go back a step simply uh, double tap or tap with two fingers on the screen and it takes you one step back in every application you have an option to undo if you undo it you will go one one step behind and you can come come back and continue from wherever you left off yeah so i am using procreate's ability to clean up the line so it gave me a clean line now um maybe change the shape again do not hesitate uh from making changes it's okay this is digital art you can go ahead make as many changes and i have experienced that uh by making changes you are always um you know in the zone of experimentation you are always 
uh, free to make any changes that you think might improve the piece of work so i always take as much time as i can to make changes and refine and get thing get things to look um, as polished as they possibly can yeah so this is one line for the eyebrow on top of that i'm going to go ahead and make another line right here and on the other eyebrow as well i'm going to make the line something like this if you see it's now coming together um let me go ahead and make that line on the top of the eye here as well i hope you are seeing it um go ahead and do it along with me i mean i would want you to draw along so that you know each step as i'm doing it you are also following along and in case you get stuck you can pause rewind watch it again and continue uh, creating right i'm going to go ahead and use the edge from here to bring in another line and close the loop for the eye yeah and on the other side here i have to be a little careful because there is a uh, part of the nose area which is kind of coming on top but i can always erase something that i do not need so i'm going to start from here continue until this point and close the loop something like that but what i'm seeing here is there is an overlap that is happening let me close this let me close this this is another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're working uh, digitally then you want to have your loops as much as possible to be closed right that essentially what it does is when you're coloring you will see that that's going to play a huge role circle for the eye circle for the eye here as well yeah um now i'm going to go and make the mark for the nose area this is something that i was talking about i'm going to take the eraser now use the same studio brush for eraser meaning you can use different kinds of erasers as well meaning if you go ahead and select any of the brushes the thing uh, that you will be erasing will get erased in the same texture as the brush that you are using so i made this mark for the nose area and uh, now under the eye there is another section which is going to make it you know a little bit more complete in the sense of making it look like an eye which has certain thickness of the eyelid underneath this part i think is a little thinner so let me go ahead and do that again uh, you can always use eraser by the way whichever is convenient to you you can go ahead and use that i am using the undo button so that i can go ahead and do it quicker erasing might take me longer rather than that if i undo it and do it again it might be a quicker way to do it so that's my preference yeah on the other side go ahead and make that mark again yeah i think we are getting somewhere now yeah let me do the mouth area as well let me close the loop on the mouth on the outside there it is so now that we have this sketch in place uh, this part is going to be fun all right so this sketch basically or the final sketch that you are seeing is on a separate layer the layer underneath was the rough sketch i'm going to hide it now uh, we do not need that anymore uh, one final detail i think i missed out 
yeah so what can i do now the simple steps for finishing coloring for this are going to be making a new layer right underneath it layer number one um, is layer number one is a rough sketch layer number two is the final sketch and this one right here what we are having is going to be the color layer but before that what we have to do is tap onto this layer and set it to reference okay when you set that to reference what happens is whenever you are filling in color it's going to use this layer as the reference to be able to fill the color now keep in mind that you have to make sure that the loops are closed and whatever color you are picking go ahead and pick that color i'm picking a green color you can see that it it is not completely uh, bright completely dark i'm keeping it in the middle tone somewhere like this and also the color is not absolutely green i am choosing something between blue and green so that i get a little bit more you know dynamic kind of a shade i have gone ahead and filled it inside yeah here as well here as well so this basically becomes the base with which we can work okay and on top of this and if you noticed when i was dragging and dropping the color here the color spreads to all the areas till the point that the loop is closed so make sure that the lines that you are drawing the loops are closed on them all right now uh, coming to the eyes as well let me go ahead and pick a black shade completely black dragging and filling in the color and that's done let me go ahead and try and pick the color for the lips here you go and you can see that it has filled in the color at one go in simple dragging motion if you want to make changes to the colors you can always do that there is nothing stopping you from experimenting with the color say if i want to try out a different shade take something which is much more lighter you can always go ahead and do that as well inside the mouth if i have to go ahead and do it i have filled in the color yet again and with the red color selected i have gone ahead and filled in the area inside the mouth which is the uh, tongue all right so you are now able to see that it's more or less looking like it is complete now you can obviously leave it at this stage and call it done as an artwork in itself maybe change the background color let me go ahead and pick a background color something like a yellow mm. yeah depends on what kind of output you are looking for you can give it a background but now you see that the background is uh, appearing through the area where the eyes are supposed to be so what i'm going to do is go to this layer again and pick a white color and fill it inside yeah almost close to white not absolutely white but as bright as i can make it now this right here you can see that pepe is more, more or less done but if you want to add a little bit more you know um dynamism or say essentially 3d look to it what you can do is add some lighting and shadows let me go ahead and do that and show you how you can do it in again a very very simple method let me go ahead and create another layer on top and right clip it onto this particular layer so that everything that you paint now is going to be clipped to this layer meaning you cannot be painting outside of wherever paint is on this layer okay let me go ahead and pick a color let me pick the color from here by tapping and holding you can see that i have picked the color and i will go ahead pick the pick a slightly more brighter variant of that one color that we have and go ahead and select that value or say a bright value something like this what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go and try add uh, try to add a you know highlight on one side let's see what happens when i do that yeah are you able to see it's making it much more brighter on the edge yeah and you can see that even if i try to paint outside i am not able to do that right i am unable to do it even if i want to paint on the outside something like this yeah something like this are you able to see that let me go ahead and add similar highlights on the other areas as well you can be following me exactly the way i am doing exact steps wherever i am adding these highlights you can go ahead and do that reduce and increase the size of the brush as you feel fit yeah on this side as well let me go ahead and do that yeah let me now um also try to add similar highlights i'm just refining the edges wherever i feel the need all right i'm seeing that there is a slight 
you know need for cleaning it up a little bit yeah and now i'm going to do the same thing for the mouth area let me now pick the color for the lips and go ahead and use a much brighter much more yellow kind of a color and try and see if i can add some shine to it have a look isn't it simple In order to make the eyes a little bit more glossy, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the um, you know color inside the eyes slightly darker. There is a reason for this. Let me show you what I mean. Yeah, or maybe not as dark, but a slightly brighter value. Yeah, so the eyes might be looking very dark right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a use absolutely white uh, value or a white paint and i'm going to go ahead and apply that on top of what we have here yeah you can see that it adds that little bit of a gloss to the eye yeah can you see that let me go ahead and add that on the other side as well this is so much fun i mean i just love doing um pepe art because it's there is so many possibilities. You could be changing, experimenting, trying out different things. Every time you give a different iteration to the Pepe character, which is so famous and so loved by so many people. Yeah, I hope you're able to see that there is some gloss that is happening in the eyes. Other thing that I can do now is even on the black area of the eye, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again pick the whitest white that I can and I'm going to go make another layer on top of everything. Why am I doing this? Because the black is right on top of everything, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So I want to add the highlight that I want to make for the eye on top of this as well. So let me go ahead and add those highlights in the eye. I'm going to make a shape something like this. Yeah. And on the other eye as well, let me go ahead and make that shape. Yeah. Try and make it equal. On the other side, add another one another one add a third one add a third one you will be able to see that that instantly gives pepe a twinkle in the eye yeah if you want to make it slightly more stylized you can add a little bit more so that the eyes kind of start to twinkle yeah i hope you guys like this um if you want to add a shadow to everything that you have created already let me go ahead and show you what you can do you can make another layer on top of the base layer this also again is clipped i only had to create a layer it's already clipped because the layer on top of it was clipped let me go ahead and pick the color for the uh, skin and use a slightly darker slightly more bluer shade this time let me try it out yeah it's looking good so let me go ahead make the brush size slightly bigger change the direction and start adding a shadow to the other side if you are able to see now I'm adding a shadow um, on this side again. Let me go ahead and add another weight. Let me add the shadow. So under the lip also, there will be a shadow. The reason is that the lip will cast a shadow on the mouth area. So let me go ahead and do that.
Now this artwork is more or less done. The things that I'm going to do now are ob absolutely optional, but you can go ahead and try them out as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the background layer, change the color of the background a little bit. I'm just going ahead trying out a few things to see if I can make this slightly better. Like I said, keep experimenting with your piece and try and see what can what you can do to make it even better than what it is looking like in that instance, right? Let me go ahead, add up another layer right below it. This time I'm going to go and select a brush, which is an airbrush, soft airbrush, and pick a color, which is very, very bright. Yeah, and go ahead and add a little bit of a glow at the back of our hero Pepe right here. Yeah, you can see that the paint that I'm applying or the value that I'm applying is uh, coming behind the character only. I'm using the brush all over, but the paint is up getting applied only behind the character, right? Let me go ahead and try and change the blend mode. I'm going to keep the uh, artwork on the side and use this layer, go to the blend modes and try and see what blend modes looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think this looks good. Hard mix looks good. It, it kind of makes it look a little, uh, you know, brighter and punchy. It kind of adds that. Okay, add is also nice, actually. Let me go ahead and keep it, at, keep it on add. And also still try and make changes to the color of the background and see if it works better with some other color. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Yeah, you can do more things. You can absolutely do uh, a lot more compared to where we are right now. Let me go ahead and say add a simple, simple, you know, cloud somewhere in the background. I'm going to do it on a separate layer. Use the brush, which is say an inking brush again, studio pen. I'm going to go ahead and add a shape for a cloud, fill in the color. Yeah, this is a cloud on the other end. Again, I'm going to add another cloud shape. It's looking like the Pepe is the sun in this scene, right? It's actually inspired by one of the artworks by the OG artist, Matt Fury. Um, and you can see that it kind of gives it that uh, children's book kind of a vibe to it. Yeah. I hope you like this. I hope you enjoyed watching this. So the Pepe artworks that I have been doing in the NFT space are more in the digital painting style. I have been using applications like Coral Paint, Photoshop. These are tools that help you do a painterly style of work. Uh, what you saw was more of an illustration kind of an artwork. And if you are interested in checking out more of my work, go ahead and check the link in the description where I'll put up uh, the link to my foundation profile. You can see all the work that I have done over there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I will see you in another video. Like I always say, stay strong and keep creating. Bye bye. Take care.